Community Hotline is made possible with generous support by the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission advocates on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. Welcome back to Community Hotline. Thanks for staying with us. Now we're going to be talking with the Kinship House. They've been on before, but we have a, an important thing we want to talk about, which is Foster, uh, Foster Care Awareness Month. And here to talk about that, we have the Executive Director of the Kinship House, Heather Jeffress. So Hi, nice Monica. to have you here again. Oh, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, you bet. And yeah. Timothy Travis, board member, always a pleasure. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about uh, foster care. It, it is Foster Care Awareness Month, correct? Yeah, yeah. so um, this month is Foster Care Awareness Month mm -hmm. and really it, it provides us with a wonderful opportunity to get out and speak to you um, and all the community members about something that often doesn't get spoken about um, but is, has a huge impact for so many children in our state. Mm -hmm. And um, we just really appreciate um, being able to come here and um, share about foster care and how people can help Right. Well, what what is it that you want people to know? What is it, what's what is the message that you want to get across? Well, I think Timothy was going to share a little bit about. <clears throat> I I was just going to say that we not only like foster care because it's a good thing. We like foster care and foster parents and foster kids because that's who we work with a good deal of the time. Right. We are working with children who are trying to mesh into a new life with new caretakers and we are working on the relationship they have with those caretakers so that they can be a part of what we like to call a forever family. Yeah. So it's a big part of our clientele is kids in foster care. Yeah. So you're so the you work with families, mm -hmm. um, foster kids and, and adopted adoptive families. Yes, and it's so it's the kids and their parents and and probably their siblings too if if that's part of the, you know, part of the family. Yeah. So, um, Kinship House works with foster children in all stages of foster care, and I think that's one of the things that people often. Um, don't know about foster care and what's so great for us to be able to come and talk about that tonight um, is that we really help children from the minute they come into that foster family. Mm -hmm. um, we also work with the children and their biological parents when bio mm -hmm. parents perhaps maybe child was taken into care because bio mom or dad had a very very serious addiction mm -hmm. and maybe mom and dad have worked really really hard to get clean and sober and so now it's time for reunification so we also work with children and families that are getting ready to reunify which means we're working with the foster parent, the bio parent, getting everyone to talk and really be there in support of the child. We also then work with adoptive parents because perhaps things don't work out that the child is able to reunify with the biological parents. And so adoption by auntie or grandma or a non-relative is the next step to their journey to a permanent family. A lot of that would be very, very tough on a child. Yeah. You know, and and yeah. on the parents too. I mean, yeah. those are situations that they can be there can be really happy components mm -hmm. of it, but there can be really you know mm -hmm. bittersweet or um, you know going from a foster being a foster situation, um, or maybe you came from a, a bad situation. So here you found some stability, but now mom and dad got it together again, and you're going to go back. It could be very scary, you yeah, know, yeah. And, the, and the trust issues and and all that kind of thing would yeah. be really difficult. So you're you're really working with the the mental health of the child and the and the relationships all in, involved. We are and that's why I say you know people don't always realize how complex foster <coughs> care is. So not only do we have all that complexity around helping the children heal, helping the children trust and helping that family be successful through the healing of the child and the child's readiness mm -hmm. to be back in a permanent family and have trust with an adult and learning how to do that but also as we um, we have so many system barriers unfortunately mm -hmm. right now in our state right. um, so not only do we have struggles with making that family whole and giving people the skills they need um, but also we have a system that really is having a difficult time um, trying to be helpful but also having a lot of struggles that and, make things and more one difficult. one of the biggest aspects of that is 
the, the uh, inability of the agency to hold on to foster parents for a long period of time. <clears throat> it's a very difficult thing to be a foster right, parent. You're right. not adopting a puppy. Uh, but, <laughs> Thank you. But, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, but, well, a lot of people come in kind of naive to a foster, parents, uh, foster care situation. So we want to help foster parents have the skills they need to handle the challenges that they're taking on so they don't get burned out and they don't go away uh, uh, after uh, a period of time if, if things are not working out well. So we want to work on the resilience of everybody mm -hmm. who's involved and we opt to uh, inclusive therapy mm -hmm. uh, uh, modes instead of individual therapy mm -hmm. modes. There's okay. times you need individual therapy. Right, right. But we want to work with everybody who's involved in this kid's life because what we're trying to do, as I say, we're trying to reconcile kids to their uh, to the relationships that they rely upon. Right, mm -hmm. so and it's, if there's a problem, it's never one person or the other who's mm -hmm. at fault, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a relationship, so there's there's always work that can be done on both sides. So do you work with foster parents before they actually get a child? Do you ever do that? Um, not really, because we're outpatient mental health. So okay. what that means is the child, um, the caseworker usually will call and schedule appointment. Then the child will come for an, a mental health assessment. So we'll be assessing the grief, loss, attachment mm -hmm. problems, right. trauma, whatever mental health concerns the child has and help them heal from those um, concerns. And then we will do family therapy frequently with the foster parent. And I think a lot of foster parents um, don't always realize that there are services there, as Timothy was talking about, that really help them to better understand the child that is coming into their home mm -hmm. so they can really meet their needs and be very successful and have a rewarding experience right. in their foster care journey, um, helping kids. And then also then to help prepare them for um, being able to help transition that child to adoption or reunification because I mean here you've been working with this child you have an attachment to them right. you care and love them because you're you know a caring adult that wants to help out right right which is so wonderful but you know there is a lot of support for foster parents but sometimes it's hard to know that um, yeah. and so I think that's another piece of getting out there and really talking about foster care and that there are a lot of community par partners um, kinship house and others that really are there to help um, foster parents be successful. Yeah. I know yeah. that's something I'd never heard about, um, you know, Kinship House or, or Bridge Meadows or mm -hmm. places like that mm -hmm. that, you know, are actually working with foster kids and their families, yeah. you know, to, to, to make it um, a, an all-around better experience than, than it maybe would have been otherwise. And so it's great to know that those those services and resources are out there. What, what do you think is the biggest um, barrier for, for families that are, you know, kids in foster care? What's, a, what's one of the toughest things for them to to deal with that you that you see yeah well I think there's a variety of things there's um, the normal function of children being in a difficult but necessary system children mm -hmm. arrive in foster care because their life or their safety was at risk right, right? Um, they weren't removed for non-serious reasons um, those reasons have left them with trauma left them with grief and loss neglect um, many different things so that in and of itself is a is a different mm -hmm. challenge mm -hmm. and um, for a lot of folks that are coming into being foster parents who may not have had those kinds of experiences. Some of them have, many of them have not. Um, and learning how to relate to that child and provide the support that they need. Um, and then the other piece that people probably have seen in the news um, in, in the Oregonian and the Statesman Journal and on TV is our foster care <coughs> system itself is having quite a bit of struggle with maintaining um, caseworkers as employees. They have very high turnover rate. They don't um, are unable to employ enough people to be caseworkers, so the caseloads are a little high right now. Um, and also, the state being in a huge budget crisis um, is greatly impacting the resources that are available for our kids and for our foster families. And so, you, if you can't recruit foster families if you can't advertise, right? Everything mm, costs money, right, right. <laughs> and, and so we have all around um, that budgetary concerns and um, I think a lack of knowledge of the system by gen people generally in the community that are not aware that we're having such struggles and that's why it's so great to come out and talk to people. Right. Um, it may seem daunting, but I think we can all help in our own small way um, and the more of us that do a little something, we can all make a big change, yeah. So what do you see are ways that we just people you know I I'm not a foster parent and you know maybe someday I would be but if I never if I was never a foster parent what are some of the things that I could do to to help 
in this whole process. You can go bowling. I can go bowling. Well, you I can, can go bowling. You can what? participate. You can participate yeah. in the Kinship House bowling. Uh, uh, okay. A -thon yep. Sounds every like fun. Year. Yep. <clears throat> you can round up a team and go bowling and get people to pledge and make some money and contribute to Kinship House. There are mm -hmm. other nonprofits that have these same kind of bowling mm -hmm. thons, mm -hmm. and you can do that, and it's kind of fun. Yeah, I, I remember way. doing a bowling mm -hmm. thing, uh, for another nonprofit years yeah. ago, and it was yeah. a it was a blast. Mm -hmm. Actually, yep. it was really yep. fun. Yep, you can come to a big party. We have an auction every um, this October on uh, October twenty sixth. Gala. Oh yeah, so yes. we have a really fun time, and people get to learn more about what happens um, for our families and for our kids, and get to participate and donate. Um, it's also how people learn. More more, so maybe they might be interested later to join the board, be a board member, right. come and volunteer. What kind of volunteer um, opportunities do you have? Oh, we have all kinds. So we have people come and help clean our play therapy rooms, because as mm -hmm. I mentioned, families and children come for about an hour, and because we work with kids from birth all the way up past uh, adulthood, 18, wow. um, we have all kinds of what we call expressive therapy, so art therapy, play therapy, role playing, mm -hmm. all different ways for children to help um, tell their story and learn how to express themselves and we do that in family therapy okay. also so that the families can role play together and work through situations and come up with their own solutions. You should see so. our sandbox. <laughs> oh yeah, the sand tray room. We it's have awesome. a Timothy great likes the sandbox. Sand oh, oh, it's really oh, cool. Yeah. It's so a good way to play with figures and they role play with those yeah. figures and the next thing yeah. you know they're talking about themselves instead of uh, the dog. So it's they're great. learning to express themselves in a healthy yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So all of those rooms, as you can imagine, if we're doing all that playing and role playing, mm -hmm. are filled with toys. So um, <laughs> we have lots of volunteers who actually come and organize those rooms, clean the toys. We see about 500 children a year, so you imagine wow. our things get very dirty. We need a lot right. of help right. to keep everything tidy they and get broken operating. You take them to the repair cafe that we just. Oh, I know <laughs> totally. I love that place. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, and get them fixed. And um, you know, and then we have people who do art supply parties for us because you can imagine oh, having yeah. that many kids um, served. We go through a lot of art supplies. That's a great way that people have really helped us. Um, actually, we have one of our board members is doing um, a project with um, a woman who's a candlelight party representative. Oh, yeah, sure. So they're doing a candlelight party to do it as a fundraiser for Kinship House. So there's so yeah. many ways. And you know, I always have volunteers come in and they say, I'm just cleaning toys. And, no, and I'm, like, just cleaning, I'm yeah. like, no, you're not just cleaning <laughs> toys because if you weren't here to clean that to those toys and organize that room, it means that um, we'd have to have extra staff. Mm -hmm. um, we would have to use resources in a different way to get the job done. So you'd be there would, all hours cleaning toys and yeah, burned out. I know. And, you know. I mean, because you don't want to yeah. burn out your volunteers yeah. and your, and your yeah. board members and, or yeah. your staff for that yeah. matter. Yeah. 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 And I mean, really, Monica, too, I mean, just you having us come here, mm -hmm. that is a piece of sharing the message and giving people the opportunity to come in and participate and help. And so the more of us that can do just something, a right, small something, right. the easier it becomes for all of us to make a change for so many children. I think in Oregon, um, in the last few years, it's been about 10,000 children in foster care um, a year. Yeah. That's it's scary. We only have a few more minutes, and yeah. I, I want to encourage people to to do what they can. Like mm -hmm. people now, there's a lot of people now when their kids have birthday parties, they kids have too many things already. Mm -hmm. So so maybe have people bring art supplies that yeah, you can donate. I mean that's a great wonderful. way to teach your children how to, yep. to share and to give and, and yep. for somebody less fortunate than them. Yeah, uh, I had a great uh, Girl Scout troop. Um, two of them have come in and they did toy drive, and then I actually did a great. tour for the girls, and it was really lovely. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And you. Are are in an actual house. You mm -hmm. are not in a clinic. You're not, oh, that's right, two next door to each other. Mm -hmm. You're not in a clinic. Why are you in a house instead of, say, a clinic or an office building? Because our children um, have to go to lots of big, intimidating, serious mm -hmm. adult buildings where not very nice things happen to them. Okay. Um, court, child welfare. Oh, yeah. And we have just one hour a week for families and children to practice healthy thinking, healthy relationships, and we want them to be ready and able um, and comfortable to use that hour really effectively. And sense. so it's really important for kids and families to feel comfortable okay. and have a place of rest and healing and not be um, nervous Determin that something yeah. is gonna yeah. happen. Um, we have about like one minute left, so mm -hmm. tell me about um, the budget cuts. How are those affecting you, the well, state budget cuts? You know, as I mentioned, the budget shortfall is, is quite, um, 
large mm -hmm. and daunting, and it's a little early to know, but the proposed budget cuts affect mental health services, addiction services, many services that are the safety net for vulnerable families. And we know when families um, are at risk of losing housing or parents have addiction that goes untreated, more children end up in the foster right. system. And then we will have less resources um, to support them. Can it's, we write to our, our <coughs> There's our get active, our, you know, yeah. get informed, and um, donate, volunteer, and just, um, you know, do your best, and we can all make a change. I've been involved in this system since 1986. Mm -hmm. There never were enough resources. Uh -huh. But okay. really, per capita, there are fewer now oh, than there sad. were back then. So people need to know that we're not going to fix this budget thing in this session of the legislature. No. Okay. We've got a five to ten year job okay. of changing the structure of the financing okay. so that we so have So that we more. can keep going. We're out of time. Thank you both <coughs> so much. And if people have any questions, I'll probably go yeah. to the website, check it out, and get involved. Well, thank you so much thank for, you having for having us. us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for watching yeah. this segment of Community Hotline. Do check out the Kinship House on their website. They're a great organization. And don't go away. We have one more segment of Community Hotline coming right up. possible with generous support by the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission advocates on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. enough to be watching the channels at Metro East Community Media.